we do indeed look at this isn't this amazing a whole big herd that is coming to well they were at the water now for some reason they ran away maybe they caught sight of Vlad's BDI watching them from the bank and they've now started to move away from the water and up into the shady areas but isn't that beautiful lots of little young ones very cool so we were trying to just see if we couldn't have one last look for those leopards, but alas, there was nothing. So I thought we'd come back past Chitwa Dam. And surprise, surprise, there we go. And there's a tiny baby. You see it there, Seb, in front. It's just being shielded by everybody, but there's a tiny little one in the shade. More to the left, oh, right to the one. front. <laughs> there we go. You see its little trunk in amongst all of them? And a little one. Isn't that cool? There it is. Now, it's being protected by all of its siblings. You see how it's being pushed into the middle? So as the herd moves, this is what happens. But there's one female in particular that seems to be very grumpy this morning. She's not happy at all. And even with us from a long way away, she keeps flaring her ears and sort of posturing at us, which is very strange. I wonder where they've come from. Maybe they bumped into somebody around Chitwa Lodge, and that's why they're a bit flustered. But she's not the female in front. It's the ones at the back that are kind of giving us their attitude at this stage so if you have a look on the right there you go there's one of them so it's this female and the other one to the left you see look at them how they already got their heads up ears are out which is quite strange this is not sort of behavior that we see from the females very often in this area normally the females here are very relaxed with us but these two in particular seem to be having a bit of a iffy moment so hopefully they will calm down i wonder if maybe they haven't bumped into something this morning maybe they bumped into those to that birmingham mail or like i say some of the people in the camp at chitwa and that's why they're getting a little bit upset and nice with that one that's dust bathing yes rather dust bathe don't worry about us we're not going to do anything to you and your herd i promise Now, if we just sit tight for a little bit, I'm sure they will slowly but surely start coming towards us. And you can actually see a bit of the heat haze in the background there. You see how the trees in the back almost look like they're shimmering? And that's because it has gotten very warm all of a sudden. And so it's starting to kind of get that haze developing in the background. Oh, hello. A little bit of interaction. So you'll often find with elephants they do sort of smell each other like that and that's their way of greeting it's almost we were talking about it the other day almost like a handshake where they'll put their trunks together in each other's mouths and they'll kind of just scent one another and they know okay that's part of my herd i don't have to worry too much it seems like they're going to just come past us which is quite nice Seb, I might just reposition ourselves so that we're on the better side of the light, although... Hold on, I just want to see how this female reacts, because there's this one that is full of nonsense in front of us. That is, Look at her, already. How she's posturing at us. Yeah, so she's already got her head up, and she's probably trying to protect all of the others. But she really is being unnecessarily, uh, sort of, showing aggressive signs for no reason. We're sitting dead still, we're not moving, and for some reason she's just not happy about all the movement around her and maybe it's the water buck it, I think a male yeah. water buck's about to get chased as well there you go, male water buck goes but I have a funny feeling they've had some sort of issue this morning maybe they bumped into a predator of some sort or there's been a big bull harassing them there's something along those lines that makes them a little bit upset you can see she's actually leaking from her temporal glands as well which we as we know is a sign and an indication of emotion so it's potentially she's upset about something and now we're just getting the sort of tail end of it and so this is what happens sometimes elephants have had a bad day and then you come along and they get a little bit grumpy with you so you've got to just kind of sit still and just let them realize that you're not in any way trying to hurt them or mess around with them and the herd is actually now all around us it's really quite cool so hopefully these two females decide just to be good girls and just to come past without any nonsense. Shame, the water buck is now getting... Okay girls, it's fine, everything is okay. No, 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 no. Now you see the young ones, how they imitate the adults. Look at how their ears are all out as well. So they watch the adults and they have the exact same posture, you see that? all throughout the herd so from the big adults to the smaller ones they're all doing the exact same 
movement. So they watch one another and they learn from their moms and how to behave and how to deal with potential threat. What's interesting also is the water buck is walking right past Vlad. So look at that, the water buck stopping looking at Vlad now. There we go. So the water buck knows that on land, that crocodile, there's no threat. Now it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the elephants because the elephants are going straight towards that now as well. But I think Vlad might know that an elephant is not something to play around with. We'll probably see him ducking into the water if they go a bit closer. But look, they're smelling him. You can see she knows there's something dangerous there. Isn't this cool? That is very cool and look she gets herself between the baby and the crocodile and then carries on so they've realized that that crocodile on land is not something they have to worry about but she makes sure her baby is safe and then goes around to be able to drink very very cool that's maybe why they're all so nervous so they're just seeing potential threat everywhere and luckily for us they were actually very well behaved and didn't give us one little bit of drama so that was cool. I'm glad that everybody decided to behave themselves coming past because at one point there I thought we might have a bit of an issue with the one female. She definitely wasn't exactly that thrilled with us being where we were. See the hippo popping out in the background as well between them? It's all happening at Chitra. <laughs> There's so many different species. It's sometimes difficult to know where you want to look. You've got hippos, there's elephants, there's the crocodile, the waterbuck, and the kind of interaction amongst them all. And it's difficult to know where to actually point your lens. So hopefully everything will kind of settle down a bit and we can catch a breath. Very, very cool. Now we've got a whole bunch of herons coming in from above as well. That's quite cool. There's a whole bunch of gray herons in the sky above us. They look like gray herons. Sorry, Seb, I know it's quite tough there. They're coming over the tree. There we go. There we go. Well done, Seb. That's very cool. Why are they gray herons? Yes, they are. Interesting, though, the one heron's got its neck out, which is very seldom for herons to fly like that. That's why I had to kind of second guess myself. Herons will typically fly with their neck in, almost in sort of an S shape. And so the one's got its neck out, and I wonder if it's because there's another pair approaching, and this is a kind of display to one another. But there we go. So these are gray herons that are busy flying away. Isn't that amazing? Well done, Seb. That's very good. It is not easy to keep a bird in shot like that while it flies. Very, very cool. Against that bright blue sky, and that's typical skies of the winter months, get these kind of deep blues. And that's actually, that's a black-headed heron. That's not a gray heron. Well done, Seb. That was very good. Well done. That's not easy at all. So it was actually a black-headed heron. So for those of you that keep your bird list, so one of those was a black-headed heron and the other one... And now the fish eagle's coming to get involved. Look, I wonder if it's not going to chase these herons. Here comes the fish eagle. It's being dive-bombed itself. This is so cool. Seb, you're doing a sterling effort, I can tell you that much. Sorry, elephants, that our attention's been drawn elsewhere for the moment. Just to watch one of these soar about is just so cool. Awesome. And the effortless sort of gliding pattern that they do is really, really so, so amazing to watch. And to think that that animal or that bird is not even using its wings at all yet. It's just gliding on the thermals that are starting to come up from the sun's rays now, and these hot air waves that are rising, and it's able just to ride those in a circular fashion. It is amazing to think that there is no wing flapping at all, and a big heavy bird like that is just being kept up by air currents. It always astounds me, and it's just something so peaceful watching eagles soaring like this. I reckon this is probably some of the best I've seen of a fish eagle. <laughs> so all the viewers that are saying good job to Sebastian, yes, that is very much a deserved compliment. Thank Seb, you are doing a wonderful job. And Seb says thank you, everyone. He appreciates that. Wow. That is really cool to watch. Can you imagine the view from up there? Well, we can, actually, because we've got the drone these days. And, well... Connor is on leave, unfortunately, at the moment, but he gets up every now and then, and we do get these beautiful views from 
his drone sometimes and it shows us what it does look like if we were an eagle now you can see our ellies are still drinking she's still playing with water on the edge there what are you doing are you having fun she's just in a grumpy mood now it's the water's fault maybe the water's not the right temperature and it's all being sprayed everywhere and meanwhile the herd on the left has also just creeped up over so close to us they're right behind us now i didn't even notice them for a second they got so sort of sidetracked by the beauty of that fish eagle soaring and the herons and our elephant that is spraying more water everywhere than actually in its mouth and i didn't realize the others were right here see she's still sniffing in our direction What are you doing? I think it's because she's trying to drink, but... Oh, listen to that. That is the best call in Africa. That was the fish eagles that were busy calling there. And it is just... Whenever I hear that, it just gives me goosebumps because it reminds me of South Africa or Africa in general. And it's that sort of sound that is so often used it really is the best sound to hear but i think the reason why she's drinking like this is because of this green algae so with the algae kind of coming in they as she's drinking trunkfuls she's picking up all this green which i don't think she likes at all and that's why she keeps sort of spraying so much of the water out and maybe hitting it with her trunk is trying to just separate all of that green algae get rid of it and trying to make sure that the water that she actually drinks is clean water and not this horrible dirty water that is floating in so you can see in the background lots of that blue green algae floating on the surface and so if you're an elephant i highly doubt you want that in your water and so if she moves her trunk about and just clears that away then she can get nice fresh clean water and be able to drink that so you can see she's busy doing it now she's just kind of disturbing the surface chasing all the water away making sure that that algae separates and then she can drink the cleaner stuff and you can actually see bits of that algae floating where she's just disturbed and there's a little baby also having a drink Well, she's certainly doing a good job of sprinkling the lawn, that's for sure. She's managed to water that whole area. Isn't that the colours, though, as they're walking along, now that the light is on our side, those blues and greens and then the greys of the elephant, really is a pretty picture. There's another great sort of screenshot for people that are, like to do the screenshots. Remember, hashtag Safari Live if you want to show us all of your screenshots and the beauty of this sort of colours and nature at work it's amazing the amount of colors that nature actually can produce and what we can see it really is very 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 incredible now i wonder if they're going to rejoin with the rest of the ellies that are now behind us that's cool hey little one have you caught up I believe a lot of you are really enjoying the sighting. Well, we are too. Sebastian, are you having fun? Yes, I'm having fun too. Yeah. High five, yes. Yeah. We do have a nice job, don't we, Sebastian? <laughs> I'm going to just turn around so it makes Sebastian's life a little bit easier because I'm trying to make him now film in an awkward angle. But here's our rest of our Ellie's, including our tiny baby who's sitting there. And this herd is going to come and join. Well, we've even got a warthog now as well, Sebastian. Look, there's a warthog also involved now i wonder if these ellies are going to chase them often you'll find a young elephant might actually chase a warthog it seems like the warthog is going to get off lightly today but let's see no they've been noticed look ears are out so there we go we're going to have a warthog elephant standoff now the warthog doesn't seem at all phased by the elephants cruising around in the background they're all pretty happy well warthog's pretty happy with the elephants being close now, I wonder if she's going to have a little mud bath. She seems as though she's gone to some mud there. That front elephant is not sure what to do. Look, the ears are out, but it's not sure. Should I go and chase this warthog, or should I just stay with mom? There we go, look. <laughs> Indecision at its best. Come on, little one, make a choice. It's waiting for mom. It's a little bit nervous of this whole thing. I think once mom comes, it will f probably be a little bit more brave. 
And our warthog, shame, is peacefully feeding. Hopefully it doesn't get chased. I'll feel bad for the little warthog. It's really got no chance when it comes to these big uh, elephants. Uh, I think it's mom that's going to end up chasing it. There we go. Sorry, warthog. You're going to have to move on. There we go. It's all very peaceful, at least. There's no aggression there. It's not like the other day when we had some of the young ones chasing the Egyptian geese with all that they had. So it's all far more sedate. And it's just incredible to watch them now. From going in this open area, they formed this massive line. And it's going to be interesting just to see how they just disappear into the thickets. It's really going to be quite nice to watch that sort of process as they start going away from us. There we go. You can see they're all sort of stretched out now. So Zane, you say the best things happen at the end of the drive. Well, yes, they do. It's amazing how often it does happen where we get these sort of last minute things at the end of the drive. And well, it's probably because we've able to explore a more a sort of wider area and we've gotten onto tracks and things like that. And, and also, it's maybe just to keep us all reminded that the hard work when it's quiet and when you drive around and you don't have much, that it can be rewarded towards the end of the drive. So I agree with you. It is very, 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 very irritating at times but also amazing sometimes it just adds to the whole suspense of everything but our elephants are slowly departing the scene now and like I say they're just drifting into the, the thickets as they kind of go and it's almost as if they know it's the end of show it's that sort of time now where it's kind of coming to a close and so they're almost as if it's been scripted now departing away from the scene itself really really cool and i can see one or two of the vultures are also starting to fly now but they're very far away so don't worry Seb. they 